Hi everyone, welcome to this Waterstone weekly update. My name is Adam Botterill, Senior in House Counsel at Waterstone and this is my colleague William Banner Smelin, one of my uh, other lawyers that works with, with me here. And we're going to talk today about restructuring options if you're in trouble uh, with historic debts. It might be IRD debt, uh, rent, other trade creditors. If people are pursuing you for payment and you can't afford to pay, you know what? What can you do, and what are your options? And there are quite there are quite a few. So we're going to run through uh, examples that we see quite quite often, and and how that might uh, be useful to you. Um, so really, if you're facing uh, stat demands or liquidation proceedings, you may want to uh, liquidate yourself and take advantage of a restructure and. Um, ways in which you can do that, um, I'll have William run you through in terms of the, the certain options that you have. Yeah, so um, one of the options if you want to keep trading is that you can uh, use the Phoenix Company provisions which basically allow you in certain circumstances to keep trading. Uh, there's a prohibition on using the same business name mm. uh, or using the same company name. The difference between them really is that the, the company name is the registered name uh, and then the business name is what you're known by to the general public. There's a ban on directors uh, operating the same company name for a period of five years. Mm. The process generally is that uh, the old company will be liquidated and a new company will be formed and the assets will be transferred to the new company uh, and if you want to keep trading in the same under the same name then you have to send out a notice to the secured creditors within mm. within 20 working days or if you apply to the court within five working days you can have that time extended. I think it's important I guess at that point to just note that this is a process that's undertaken by the liquidator so in terms of the actual sale and working out the you know what assets there are and the value and the sale price and receiving that payment it's done through the liquidation it's not done before liquidation and there are some pitfalls there if, if, if a company is transferred prior to, to it being wound up then a subsequent liquidator can look to unwind what happened and see where the money went and it can create all kinds of problems. So it's important that the process is followed mm. with the liquidator doing those steps. And then it's an arm's length transaction. It's done for fair value and there can be no questions. Yes, yeah, so the market valuation is a really important mm. aspect of that. So it, um, it is all above ground. Mm. And well, you're not, you're not going to get your business for free, but, no. but there are some ways in which it can be structured to assist in terms of uh, you know, dealing with the payment of the purchase price. And I'll talk about um, in a, uh, a case example uh, later on how we manage to assist uh, some business owners get around that. Uh, so in terms of the legal requirements, um, if you do operate a what's called a Phoenix company, uh, which is basically a play on the phoenix which rises from the ashes uh, <laughs> is, the, the, is kind of the metaphor for the new company. Um, if you do operate the, the new company in breach of the Companies Act provisions, then you'll be held liable for the debts of the company. So it's right. quite important that you uh, comply with those provisions. Mm. And it's interesting, like, that for, for this specific... Um, Phoenix Company law to be caught by this you have to operate the new company with a same or similar name and it has to be I mean they've got a little bit of guidance on that it's if if the names could be thought to be associated mm. so you, you have to go I think pretty far in changing the name to actually not not breach that so if you if you want to keep Couldn't trading go from Waterstone to Water Suns Stone water. <laughs> or, no, it would be associated. So we'd have to change it to something completely Bob, different if Bob's we were to do that. Not, yeah, Bob's liquidations or Bob's burgers or something. Bob's burgers. Something, something, something really different. And, uh, but if you do change the name to something like that, then you actually don't fall under this category of, mm. of Phoenix at all. So really, it's only if you want to keep the same name. If you think there's brand and IP and recognition, you don't want to go through the process of changing that. Then you will need to make sure you get some advice on your obligations and to you know not breach the Phoenix rules. And, and I think the main one of the main justifications for the 
ban on the Phoenix company mm. uh, is that uh, as a matter of policy, Parliament doesn't want uh, people being duped by directors right. in, let's say, uh, hypothetical scenarios where a director uh, screws over uh, old creditors and then liquidates the company and then mm. uh, decides to form a new company under the same name, has got the goodwill of the old company but uh, has a lot of underlying uh, burnt bridges mm. and... Well, it's about putting people on notice about mm. what's happened and you know, l letting them know the change and the reason for the change and who's involved. And if, if, you, if you take those steps, then you're exempt from um, being a Phoenix Company director, mm. which, is, which, is a, which is a great way to, um, to continue on if you want to use that same name that you've been using, that you've been using before. Now, now, I'm going to touch on a case example from last year where at Waterstone we assisted a, uh, a trade, trades business um, that was involved in restoration, renovation um, in the building and construction industry. This was a business that had legs, it was profitable month by month, but it had some historic uh, IRD debts that had been built up over a period of time. Um, we understand there was some poor management at the company and there was an oversight in terms of its obligations and it had got to a point where it couldn't get out of the, uh, the hole, so to speak. It was you know, facing uh, liquidation uh, by, by creditors. Um, so it, it needed to take action and what we managed to do with that company is we um, did a, a Phoenix company restructure, we were appointed liquidators, we assessed the value of the business and we sold it back to a, a, a separate new entity that wasn't actually being run by the same person so there was a, actually a step removed there but the old director was still associated with the company as a, um, a manager so to speak. So we, we, we managed to do that very, very quickly and because they, they didn't have the cash up front, what we managed to do is we, we uh, arranged for payments over time whereby um, they would pay us monthly installments and uh, in exchange we also took a security o over that new business. So if they defaulted, we'd have the right to appoint a receiver and you know, collect the money that we were owed outstanding. So that was a great, a great outcome for this business. It meant they were able to continue on trading. They didn't have to come up with the cash all at once, and they've been um, paying back over time. And that can be a, um, a fantastic option for some um, businesses that have, you know, have legs, they're profitable, but for a historic issue. And I think the main thing they need to focus on after doing this process is just not getting back in that same position again. So making sure they are up to date with all of their you know their debts and their taxes and not not falling um, down that trap again yeah, so that sure. was that was a really uh, good example where we helped a business last year get through and, and we've got another uh, re similar restructure mm. where there's some old debts that uh, the directors are trying to um, keep their business afloat the, it's a good it looks like a good business they've got good um, revenue streams, um, they've got a pretty healthy balance sheet as well, um, mm. but in terms of the restructure, um, they are just seeking to kind of move forward, I suppose, and uh, we're helping to do that. And I think one of the important things to note with the restructuring process is that it can be highly, highly tailored to your company um, and your, your company's specific needs mm. um, and all companies have got specific needs so um, certainly get in touch if you think that this is an option. Mm -hmm. um, yep. if, you, if, you are, if you're going through some hard times or you have some historic issues that you need to you know, address and sort out and you want to ask for our opinion on whether you, you know, this would be a, a good process for your business, um, you flick us an email, give us a call or we actually have um, on um, on an online booking system for consultations where you can meet with us and discuss and those are on our website. Um, we can probably meet back when we're in level two or if we are already, that's great. But um, yeah, that's, that's all for now. So th th thanks for watching and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Cheers.